bit to follow a little closer. Okay. I'm going to come sit over here next to you. And see if you can still see me a little bit. That's good. All right, is it time for me to back out? To the inaugural video version of Ancestral Muses. So I'm going to be popping in and out of the video. This is kind of sort of we're in the testing stages here, but I want to introduce you to the gentlemen of watercolor and who we have we have mr ken austin we have mr glenn ward and we have chauncey nelson and these gentlemen are going to have an exhibit at city arts the opening reception is may the 18th from 6 to 9 p.m and then on the 20th there's going to be a gallery talk with these same gentlemen from 1 to 2 p.m and we would first like to thank City Arts and the Downtown District for allowing us to be here today in this space so we can have a quick conversation and pick the brains of these illustrious Florida artists who are also watercolorists. So, who would like to start? Or who would like to share a little bit about themselves Ken? <laughs> and it looks like mr ken looks like it's going to be you so ever so quickly i think i should mention are you not like the founder of the central florida watercolor society yes i am hmm can you briefly share with us how that came into being well i came here from houston and there they have a wonderful, wonderful society that they've had for about 20 years. And, uh, and uh, when I moved to Houston, uh, I just I joined that. And it just meant so much to me in terms of bringing, bringing me forward and uh, with my ability. And so do you remember when you founded the Watercolor Society? How long ago that's been? Long time. And long time. We'll, we'll go with long time. <laughs> 20 years before. Okay. And so generally, do you have a subject matter of, of things that you, when you do watercolors, that you paint? Uh, not really. I, I tend to move into some area that I'm interested in. And go through that until I'm sick of that or it's sick of me. And so then I, I go to something else that I'm interested in. I've got a lot of things that I like, and a lot of uh, artists whose work I like. And so I study that. And I don't try to copy their art, but I do see things in there that I never have used. And so I I should have checked to see if I had a Wi-Fi connection because I did pull up and I'm just going to share with you. These are some images and I don't know if the Wi-Fi is going to permit this. Are those some? Do you recognize any of those? Yes, I do. Okay. Oh, They're all yours. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah, so um, of all the watercolors that you've done, and I know that is a lot, do you have any favorites or do you, was there a time when you did like a series where you centered on perhaps one something or another that you would like to share a little something about? Or how about if you share with us, what can we expect in the exhibit? Well, 
you can spend a tenth of what you ever did. And that's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> and um, I'm happy with all of it, too. You know, if I, if I don't like it, it doesn't ever get in my studio. It doesn't ever get out of my studio. It gets in the garbage. I agree, and I think the beauty for, for those who will come and see the exhibit is that you obviously have a body of work that you have worked on your lifetime. And, and I know a lot of artists, and I think that as we go through life, we evolve and our style changes. Would you say that's been true for you too? Yes, it's, uh, it's a little different for me because my mother was an artist. And uh, because of that, Association. You know, frankly, I've been painting in watercolor since I was about four years old. Wow. With a woman whose uh, background was in art. She got uh, a master's in fine art from Brother Hunter Ah, in Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah. So, uh, I so you were art. surrounded by art when you were growing up? Yeah. Until I was in college, I really didn't uh, pay much attention to what I was doing. <laughs> and then I had to learn, I was always an architect. And back in those days, we didn't have computers. So you, were you actually an architect? Yes. You know, that is amazing because I have two other friends of mine who are architects. And one doesn't necessarily think that someone who is an architect necessarily would be an artist, but I beg to differ because when you think of architecture, you think of someone who's more concerned with form, with mathematical figures, geometry, and, and art is kind of sort of like. Well, I think they're right. Uh, you know, so we have to learn how to paint buildings that we design. No, and even now, architecture itself, I mean, it's, a lot of it is computer driven, which, I mean, everything is now computerized and it wasn't that way before. So I think for those of us who are what I like to call dinosaurs and we've been around for a minute or two, you know, knowing how to do things more hands on gives us an advantage, I think, than someone who just strictly relies on something that's computer generated or computer assisted, because I think when you actually use all of your senses, which you tend to do, that it makes you maybe a little bit better at your craft. You know, you know there's a lot of difference between punching a button and so that make this more real and taking a brush and making a green that reflects the color of the trees or, or, or is bright on one side and dark on the other side. You know, that's a little possible. All those things are future. Yes, you have that, you know, that free license as an artist. So I'm not going to leave you gentlemen out. So, Mr. Dunn. Yes, ma'am. I think also, if I can have this again, and let's see if my trustee pad will allow me. Um, and like I said, I should have asked them what the Wi-Fi password was. But see, it keeps saying no internet. Isn't that ugly? But I know, I know, I know um, when I, let's just see if it'll, if it'll let me. Because I had, um, prior to coming here, I had put your name in and I had come up with some interesting surprises for you too. So, um, what would you like to share with us? Okay, so let me look at my notes very quickly here. So I know if memory serves me correctly, um,
completely different occupation before you became yes. an artist. And what was that occupation? I was a hairdresser. I was a religious. And how did for you? For 55 years. Oh, my goodness. So what I made did, you? I did everything you could do in the profession, including I was spent four years under the Governor Nelson of Florida? Yes. So you were, you were saying it was right? He appointed me, and I became part of the licensing board that licensed, examined some of the hairdressers. I've been on platform and conventions, I've been in competitions, I've been in salon owners, and I'm listening. Enough. <laughs> and then, I'm over. And then you segued into art. So how, how did that happen? Well, I started uh, painting and studying art in 1974. And you before I graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have had many mentors. You're an excellent company. He doesn't know it, but he, he, he was. See? Your legacy lives on through your students. Uh -huh. And... Uh, Somebody, I like uh, Abraham Lincoln. I did a lot of reading and a lot of studying and a lot of talking with them and, and working with people that I uh, enjoyed their work and liked what they did and teach me how to do it mm -hmm. rather than having a degree in it. Uh, I do have a degree, but it's in law. I have a very uh, liberal degree. Ah, and the two gentlemen an know. degree. <laughs> So you're like me, you have all these degrees and you have a background because I too, yes. I'm an attorney, so I have a law degree. But I, I like to say I'm full of not necessarily useless information, but I think when you, mm -hmm. you come from a certain, if you've been fortunate enough to receive an education, I grew up in Philadelphia, and in Philadelphia I was exposed to art and to music, and my father was in the military and I got to travel a lot. Mm -hmm. And so today I think the young people are somewhat at a disadvantage because they're not necessarily exposed to art nor music. And we all know that art and music make you a well-rounded individual, right? You know, beauty exists everywhere. There's beauty in art and music, architecture. There's beauty all around us. But if you've never been taught to, to like, pause and, and take it all in, then, you know, you're just like, that, that rat on the track will just keep, and you never take the time to appreciate the beauty of your surroundings, like what Mr. Austin does with architecture. Oh my God. I mean, beautiful buildings, structures from thousands and thousands of years ago to now what we have the more modern aesthetic, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. And I also understand you are a, a teacher. Do you not teach? I, I am a teacher. I teach. Uh... Well, at Creole, uh, I teach uh, one of the classes there that I teach is the introduction to art and painting. And basically what that is is to introduce, because I work in all mediums, uh, then gets them the opportunity to try art, mm -hmm. try, and even to try and paint with acrylics and watercolor and pastel color pencil and draw in here. Mm -hmm. And then I teach a drawing one class which uh, spans uh, six weeks of intensive mm -hmm. study <laughs> or teaching or whatever you want to call it. How cool is that? And I, in fact, my uh, summer session I have uh, two classes to teach in the beginning work. This is a brush. <laughs> Basics. Art Basic, 101. I've written, yes. I've written a book on watercolor, beginning watercolor. And it's called, Come on in, the water's fine. Yeah. How so, cool is that? How cool is that? And uh, it, I published some of it. And uh, of course, I did, just made it available for the students. So, and I've written, written one on pastels, one floor with pastels. The Secrets to Public, uh, Perfect Portraits, um, Drawing, Drawing One, uh, plus seven cookbooks. <laughs> a true Renaissance man. 
I tried. <laughs> so, in the upcoming exhibit, The Gentleman of Watercolor, mm -hmm. what can we expect to see from you? Whatever I put out there. <laughs> I'm, I'm told that I, there are certain things that Brad has told me that he wants, and he says, that has to be in the show. And he says, definitely, I want my show. So you might have more, like, maybe you can get the Wi-Fi connection that I put down on this no, tablet. No, I'm, I'm working on my data here. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so do you generally... He says, generally I definitely want the turkeys. <laughs> and I saw the turkeys when I had my Wi-Fi connection. So right. what is the significance of the turkeys? The turkey, well, this is the Florida wild turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many different subspecies of the wild turkey. And uh, he resides around in Florida. This was a, from a photograph of a friend of mine in Louisiana shot. And these are uh, a very unusual pose of three male or what they call tom turkeys okay close together because they usually alone us. you don't find them coming together mm -hmm. and there was three of them and he shot the photo and it says paint this so i did oh, cool. and i they looked to me like soldiers they do lined up like centuries all lined up in attention and i, I titled it ten <laughs> And see, from a military background, I can do it. I am. I am a Vietnam veteran. Thank you for your service. You know, I would not have received, my brothers and I, we would not have received the education that we received had it not been for the fact that my father was in the military. Mm -hmm. And we, we benefited from that. Um, and I'm, I'm very blessed that I received the education I received, that I've been able to travel the places I've traveled. In fact, just a few weeks ago, I just returned from Togo, West Africa. So I've been very, very, very blessed. So other than the wild turkeys, what else did Brad say you had to have in the show? Or you want to keep that a secret and tell people well, they have to come uh, to the, the exhibit uh, to see it? it uh, the, the other one that he has on the, uh, oh, on the piece way. of it on the flyer yes. is, is called uh, the uh, Tahoka Collider Lotus. This one. This one. Yes. And so I will, I don't know if you all can see it, but I will post it so you can that see these are some of the, well. the watercolors. So these are the gentlemen of watercolor, as you see, they're all quite handsome, are they not? We have Chauncey Nelson, Ken Austin, and Glenn Ward. Okay. So this is another one that you're going to have in the show. Right. So if I can ask, are these works from each one of you gentlemen? Like, is this a work of yours, Mr. Nelson? Uh, no. Oh, that's yours, Mr. Nelson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how about you? That's mine. Wow. Okay, so this one is yours. Yeah. And what do you call it? Uh, I think the name of this is the stocking. And the rest of the, the rest of the painting, she's putting on her stocking. Ah, how cool. And so, uh, this is, uh, and she's new. And do you generally think that nudes are well received? Or do you think that people, because most Americans have hangups about nudity, even if it's art, because we know art, nudity and art kind of go hand in hand, in my opinion. Well, I don't know about most Americans, but I know that, that people who love art and know something about it are not, you know, they're not offended by it. Thank you. Not, exactly. You know, they're not uh, concerned about Exactly, exactly. Thank you. And so, is there anything else you'd like to say really quickly before we well, ask Mr. Chauncey to say anything? One of the ones that I'm going to have, I do believe, is called a taste of butterscotch. Ooh. Oh, is butterscotch the king? Butterscotch is the name of the king. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, and is that your grandson? That's correct. Is that a grandson, perhaps? A grandchild? No, uh, that was uh, the uh, nephew of a friend of mine. That is so cool. <laughs> All 
Okay, thank you. And so, Mr. Chauncey, yeah. how are you? I'm fine. And so, not to leave you out of the conversation, I was just trying to spend a little time with everybody. And so, then that means that this work yeah. is yours. And yeah. do you recall what you call this? I think that's, I've done two similar shapes and colors and I can't remember the name. And that's okay. Yeah. And so generally, I think what we would call your work is more abstract, is it not? Is that what you, is that how you would categorize it or should I not categorize it at all? I am for variation. I like to do everything instead of just one thing. Okay. I've been criticized all my life for selling my work too cheap and uh, not having the style. I don't want a style because that would limit me. Exactly. I grew up on a farm in Nebraska and went to a country school where the year I was a first grader, there were only 20 kids in the whole school. Oh my goodness. When I graduated, there were only three of us and I had one classmate for those eight years and he was smarter than I was. So I, I majored in art. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. But we know really and truly to be an artist, it takes a lot. I mean, you draw on a lot of different skill sets, I mean. Well, and growing up on a farm gives you a good start because it has everything to do with nature. And I enjoy nature and I enjoy growing things. And so um, if I had a key word of my art, I would call it variation. Okay. Because I, I don't want to get stuck with one thing over and over and over. And I think that's true. I know a lot of artists and I think um, as we go through life, because I too am an artist, I do art quilts, as you grow and you become exposed to different things and even among your peers, because you know you have synergy and energy among each other yeah. and then if you get together as a group you kind of feed off of each other's energies yeah. and so you can learn a lot from each other and because most of the people that i know come from different cultures um for instance i i learned batik from a friend shalini tandem who's an artist and she's from india and so over the years that i've known her her style has changed. Um, there was a time when she would just strictly do batik, which is just like wax mm -hmm. on silk. And now she's spread out and she's doing acrylic. And I mean, not yeah, that's, that's amazing because I made my livelihood selling my art through the street shows. Uh -huh. And my media was batik. Was it? It was. Um, Are you going to have any batiks in the show? No. All right, I'm gonna have to get with Brad and we're gonna have to get together so I can see some well, of the things. Uh, it's a watercolor show. Okay, it so is. a watercolor batik. Well, I didn't no. use watercolor, I use batik dye. That's what I thought, yes. On silk. Exactly, which is what I do when I do batik. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so now you don't necessarily do the batik, you do more of the watercolor? I started out painting in oil, very realistic, because I have an uncle who was also a farmer, and he painted during the winter months when work on the farm was slow, and during the Depression, it was hard to sell paintings, and he and his wife would give paintings to all family members, his gifts and uh, different occasions. So every time he went to visit somebody, the first thing you saw was a, a, a Uncle Al hanging over the couch, <laughs> you know. And uh, so his his interest created my star. And then I had teachers that were good all the way through uh, grade school. Didn't have art in high school. Um, got a BS in agriculture, and I have more hours in art than I have in my major. <coughs> for voluntary and different 
and time evenings and Saturdays. So, uh, uh, like I said, if, if I could label my art in any way as a variation, because now I combine everything. I use different tools. I don't just paint with a brush. Uh, it, uh, it's been a good, good experience. So, if I could ask each of you, if you had any words of advice for up and coming artists, what would you share with them? What would you say, based on your years of being an artist, but also an architect, what words of wisdom would you share with someone who either is striving to make a living out of art or is just wetting their feet and, and becoming an artist? Well, I think they're important part about being an artist is finding what you love and, and proceed with it. And as you go through uh, the years of uh, painting or sculpting or whatever you do, you find the things that come easy to you and the things that are difficult. And so there are a lot of decision points in your career with after a few years, you can find a middle point where you can accept new things, dump all things, keep some of it, but, you know, move exactly. and, and continue to build. And I think to me that's what's important about art is continuing. You know, anybody can sit down and paint the same picture every day for 50 years. Yes, because hopefully, right, <laughs> as you get older, you get exposed to new things, and that's reflected yeah, sure. in, the, in your art, absolutely. It's very natural, I think. And of course, my mom, being a study artist, it was a big impact on me because um, I used to go out to, she would take me out with her uh, during the Second World War. My dad was overseas. She was there with three kids. And she was, a, she was an artist, and I could say, she'd take me out with her when she painted. How cool. And, uh, so I never found, I mean, there was nothing about her that, uh, that I thought I could do. And that's a good way to be. Grown up with her. Absolutely, and so, absolutely. And that, that, I think, is one reason why I still want to. And that's a good thing. Absolutely. And how about you, Mr. Green? Well, I, my style of art has been categorized as kind of a um, impressionistic realism. <laughs> uh, I don't actually uh, paint everything that I see exactly as it is, because I will move things around. Okay. Change the shape of things or change the color like of things. Like kind of like surrealism, kind of sort of. Well, there's, or more there's, there's, like you, when you look at it, you know what it is. Okay. But it's not like what it actually looks like. Okay. And I, I can only explain it as impressionistic realism. And you see what it is, mm -hmm. but that's not the way it is really. On, on it's. it's together. I may take two two scenes and put it together to make one. In other words, you have to come to the exhibit people and see this for yourself, okay? And last but not least, Mr. Chauncey, what would you say to someone who was interested in becoming an artist or, or developing as an artist? Well, becoming an artist is like life. In life, you get choices. You have to analyze these choices and make a decision on which one you want to use. And then you have to take some action and do it. And then the big part of responsibility is what happens. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, so much. I can't wait to see you all at the opening. I will be there May 18th. So everybody, please come to City Arts to see the gentlemen of Watercolor. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. You. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thank you.